She give me too, so don't y'all feel bad. Amen. 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 Oh boy, you don't. All right, I just start a fight up here. You know, I got a fighting spirit too. Amen. Let us go to Second Corinthians chapter number thirteen, verse number five, and Psalms eighty-four, verse number eleven. I'm going to read two two verses, and I'm going to try to preach to you in twenty-five minutes. Amen. I like that. You hear that ushers? That's what we have to say around this time. Amen. Would y'all give my two ushers a hand praise? Amen. Amen. I love them. Amen. Brother Williams with Brother Garner. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to need two of my sisters. We'll have a list made today. Before y'all get out of here, I need my two new sisters. I need y'all to let me know and I want y'all on y'all post. Amen. Amen. For New Year's and then we'll mix it up. Amen. I'm excited, man, to see the praise dance. I asked them, could they give me a robe like that? Man, that's so beautiful. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Psalms 84 and 11. And the scripture reads, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not yourselves how that Jesus Christ is in you. Except you be reprobates. Psalms 84 and 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk upright. I'm going to talk for a few minutes today from the subject the final examination. Right now. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. This, Sunday this Sunday is the last Sunday, is the last Sunday of, the year. of the year. So we must, so we must undergo, undergo the final, the final examination. examination. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You got it. I began to ask God, I said, God, I don't want to preach a traditional message because the church is tired of stories that do not leave a mark on their lives or do not release information or revelation that will catapult them or push them until or into there tomorrow. So I asked God, I said, what was this whole year about? Many people in the church went through various trials and temptations and weathered many storms, found themselves in places that they did not want to be in, going through situations and facing conditions that were not joyful. Amen. Amen. And I said, what was 2010, or the young people call it 2010, what was it all about? And he said it was a classroom. <coughs> all 11 months up until this point, we were in a classroom learning how God does things. Every Sunday morning, every Thursday, many times on other occasions, we had special, special homework. We were given lessons. It was not sermons that we were given in this house. We were given different information, lessons to educate you concerning the place that you are going. Not where you've been. Everybody knows where they've been. Amen. We're asking the question, why am I experiencing all the things that I am experiencing, Lord? Why am I dealing with and facing all of the challenges that I'm facing? And God said, you're in school. Amen. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. Yes. And he's teaching us 
through experiences. Nobody can say that they have knowledge without experiences. Amen. Well, it's experiences that give birth to knowledge. If you had not been through what you've been through, you wouldn't know what you know. Come on, now. Come on. Come on. So God puts you in experiences to build or to edify you in the capacity of knowledge. Knowledge allows you to identify certain things and that's why God has all of these pastors and apostles in the body of Christ and prophets in the body of Christ because they have already paid the price for their education. They have experienced some things so now they can give you knowledge on the thing that you're going through. Amen. Amen. But we got folks that cut class. <laughs> we got folks that don't pay attention in class. We got folks that don't bring a notepad to class. They don't get the CDs that come from class because they're saying, well, they're only trying to get money from us. No, we're trying to get revelation to you that you're going to utilize at another point in your life. But if you don't have what it takes when you face certain situations, fear come upon you and you are defeated because you did not have the necessary information to get the victory over your circumstance. All right, All right. So Paul is stressed out here. Paul is stressed out. This is not his first visit to the church at Corinth. This is his second visit. That's why they call it Second Corinthians in here. And the 13th chapter just happens to be the last chapter. Mm -hmm. And Paul ministered so profoundly because he was such an awesome man of God that he always ministered with the expectancy that Jesus would come at any time. Amen. So when he gets back to them, he says, I've been here and I'm stressed out with you guys, but, but what I need you to do is to take a final examination. I need you to examine yourselves. I'm not going to judge you. That's, that's not my job. I need you to examine. I need you to inspect. I need you to investigate. I need you to evaluate yourself. Honestly. And ask yourself a question. All of the importations and all of the deposits that I've made in your life, where are you in your spiritual walk? Are you really saved or are you still lost? After all of the Sundays, after the, all of the rolling on the floor, after all of the tongues, after all of the jumping and the shouting, after all of the running and the glory and the seeds you sow because the word was so good to you, are you still in the same place that you were in when I came? Or have you evolved or advanced into the faith? I don't want people to talk like that. Come on, he says, I'm not going to do it. I need you to look at you. I need you to be honest with you. I need you to say, you know, man, I need to be real with myself. Am I still lying? Am I still cussing? Am I still lusting? Am I still going through all of these different things? Am I still confused? Am I still mixed up? Am I still as weak as I was when I first came? I need to find out what's, what, what, what's, what's going on and if I, if I be in the faith now the word in means to be a part of or a member of and the faith is one's religious preference or belief you got to understand some religion is simply what one chooses to believe now here he's talking to Christians followers of Christ the body of Christ those who have been taken out of the darkness and brought into the marvelous light that they may show forth the praises of he who have brought them out he's saying you know yourself yeah, yeah, my God. See, see, you can play your role with everybody else and you can fake it till you make it, but, but, but at the end of the day, you know you what man know of not himself, except the spirit of a man. And your spirit is revealing to you where you really are. Amen. I don't like to go to Pastor Church because Pastor come down. No, 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 no. Pastor make you look at yourself. Amen. See, you can never fix it if you don't face it. Amen. Oh Amen. See, you can't fix what you don't face. I got to check this 
of these weaknesses, they become targets for my adversary. They become areas of vulnerability in my life. I got to look at myself and evaluate. Listen, this here ain't right. This need to be a little bit tighter. Yeah. Yeah. This love thing, I need to work on this love thing more. This understanding, I need, I need a greater level of understanding because lack of understanding makes us do false judgment against people. Oh, God. And then the next week we're wondering why we're going through because we, we broke up into Matthew 7 and, and 1 where it says, Judge ye not, lest ye be I've got a little church in here today. So, so he, he's telling them, check yourself out. You know yourself. You know who you are. You know what your weaknesses are. It's time out for hiding them. You're not hiding them from God. And God is the only one that can judge you. But you got to realize you don't know when Jesus is going to come. And I like this urgency down on the inside of Paul. He had an urgency that you got to be right at all times because any time he might come. And if he come and catch you half-stepping, you're going to be left behind. So he put this pressure on them. He says, now you won't be able to be upset with me because I put the ball in your court. I need you to evaluate yourself.